the next passage according to the passage given about deforestation and denudation will ultimately lead to which of the following just giving it a casual glance we can very well say that the first statement is valid say the first sentence unless the forces and tendencies which are responsible for destroying the country's environment are checked in the near future and afforestation of denuded areas is taken up on a massive scale the harshness of the climatic conditions and soil erosion by wind and water will increase to such an extent that agriculture which is the mainstay for people will gradually become impossible so we can very well say that this deforestation and denudation will ultimately lead to depletion of soil resource statement one is valid if that's the case we can eliminate second option alone so we need to validate the other statement second statement shortage of land for the common man as in when we read the passage there isn't any reference to this particular idea of shortage of land so let's move on to the third statement let us be very sure and then we'll come back third statement lack of water for cultivation Statement 3 is valid and the last sentence implies this idea where only a few decades back there used to be lush green forests with perennial streams and springs. There is only brown earth bare of vegetation without any water in the streams and springs except in the rainy season. So this clearly supports the third statement. Answer is option C. Well, this passage is quite challenging. Those who have tried answering this passage, if you had practiced enough already, this would have resulted in reading this passage minimum two times to max three or four times. Whereas for those who lacked enough reading comprehension practice, would have certainly felt it very, very hard, very, very difficult for finding the answer. Okay. And yet another point to be noted here is the style of this passage the way in which the content is presented itself is quite dense or using this passage, passage as an example we can say for sure that style of comprehension passages is also increasing we have to make it a point especially for those who are preparing for the next year you have to take this as a, an important thing that your your reading has to be quite intense and your reading comprehension pra practice must be intensive but believe me, I'm going to give you the simplest clue, the simplest trick to answer this question. I'm going to give you answer for this question in less than 30 seconds. Let me start the question. According to the passage, natural selection cannot anticipate future environments on the earth as you've been given four statements. Let's start with statement one. Species not fully prepared to face the environmental changes that avoid them will face extinction. When you're on a difficult passage and when you're on a statement validation question it will result in time loss if you're gonna take the casual approach or the approach of an ordinary aspirant you have to be quite smart in validating these statements and do note it we have been telling in our aptitude buster classes and in aptitude buster videos that there is always one good thing about the difficult questions on CSAT. When the question is difficult, definitely there will be some cute logic for you to find the answer in much less time. And that's what I'm going to tell you now. Statement one, as we read, we, we can say for sure that we have to read through the passage once again. Now let's take the second statement. All the existing species would get extinct as their genomes will not withstand biological mishaps. Now this is where the catch, the examiner is helping us here. He said, all the existing species would get extinct. But as by the passage, it's not all. Look here. The earth may presently have up to 10 million species. Yet more than 90% of species that have ever lived on earth are now extinct, which means we can say majority of species, but we cannot say all the existing species. Therefore, second statement is invalid. Applied on the options, we'll arrive at the answer choice. Answer is option C for this question. Is it simple? It is. And definitely, you, this is how you have to solve questions in real examination. You need to get practiced in this way.
which one of the following statements best reflects the crux of the passage here the crux means the central idea let us go to the options straight because this being a general question you have to pick it from the options people should be persuaded to continue with mainly Indian traditional cereal based diets when the author presents his idea he does not make any recommendations so we cannot say people should be persuaded there is not any recommendation made in the passage so A is definitely a wrong choice. Look at option B, India needs to focus on developing agricultural productivity and capacity for more energy generation in the coming years. If you look at the last sentence, increasing use of electronic and electric machines, gadgets and motor vehicles needs more and more energy and generation of energy. It does not mean that the author stops with saying what has resulted in increase of increase the need for electric energy we can put it that way. So, so he does not say that India needs to focus on developing agriculture productive or capacity for more energy generation. So, this is not the main message or this cannot be considered the message that best reflects B can be eliminated. It is not completely supportive, it is not completely convincing. Statement 3, modern technological and developments result in the change of cultural and social behavior of the people. Yes, this is true because the first sentence and most importantly the second sentence direct results of the affluence have been changes in dietary patterns and energy consumption levels. People have moved to a high protein based diet like milk. So, this indicates there is a change of cultural and social behavior of people. C is very, very convincing. Let us keep it. Look at option D, water management practices in India need to dramatically, ch need to change dramatically in the coming years. Absolutely, this passage does not talk about water management practices. We can be very sure to say that option C is the answer for this question. Next. Of all the passages, this one passage which is which has been carefully picked by the examiner for its loveliest presentation of idea. The author, the entire passage is a quote, right? And we have to find out from the quote the message that can be reflected or we have to read understand and from the options we have to comprehend what could be the author's intended message. So, though the passage is very very short this is categorically a very very challenging question. Definitely it have made you to read 3 times to 4 times. Okay, Let us go to the question which one of the following statements best reflects the message of the author of the passage. Okay, let us start with option A. We assume that in a democracy, any politician is qualified to administer a state. This could be, let us keep it for a while because that is what the author talks about. Even when simple matters like shoe making, we think of a specially trained person or an expert and he moves on from one to the other. When we are ill, we call for a trained physician whose degree is a guarantee of specific preparation, technical competence. We do not ask for the handsomest physician. When the whole state is ill, should we not look for the service and guidance of the wisest and the best? So, by asking us a question, the author is presenting his opinion and that is very much coming closer to the idea presented in option A. Look at option B. Politicians should be selected from the Politicians should be selected from those trained in administration. When the author asks the question, should we not look for the service and guidance of the wisest and the best, it does not mean that he recommends that politician should be selected. So, definitely B is not the one that reflects the message best. B can be eliminated. Option C, we need to devise a method of barring incompetence from public life. Probably 
this could be considered but if we are asking to be the one that best reflects the message it's doubtful maybe on the first look we can reserve option c as well so we have reserved two choices option a and option c look at option d as voters select their administrators the eligibility of politicians to administer administer a state cannot be questioned of course he's not talking about the eligibility here d can be eliminated right away between option a and option c if we are asking the one which best reflects the message then we can say for sure between these two option a is the one that reflects the message the best possible way answer is option a now the next passage this passage is very very dense in terms of content it has three questions let's take one by one why is the methodology adopted in india to count the poor debatable that's a question the author opens the passage with this idea he says the poverty line is quite unsatisfactory when it comes to grasping the extent of poverty in india it is not only because of its extremely narrow definition of who is poor and the debatable methodology used to count the poor but also because of a more fundamental assumption underlying it so the author is very clear and quite assertive in claiming that that the way the poverty line is being defined is debatable okay so taking that as a clue we cannot say that there is some confusion there is clarity the author says for these reasons the methodology is debatable so option a can be eliminated now look at option b there are wide diversities in the condition of the rural and urban poor throughout the passage the author nowhere makes this differentiation of rural poor and urban poor so we can be very sure option b can be eliminated look at option c there is no uniform global standard of there is no uniform global standard for measuring income poverty for is this for the risk is this the reason which author uses to say that the methodology is debatable certainly no answer is option d the methodology adopted in india to count the poor is debatable because it's based on the proposition of poverty as meager income or buying capacity here the author makes a clear statement it exclusively relies on the notion of poverty it represents a methodology here exclusively relies on the notion of poverty as insufficient income or insufficient purchasing power one can better categorize it by calling it income poverty so answer for this question is option d the second question in the same passage why is income poverty only one measure of counting the poor okay let's start with the options it talks of only one kind of deprivation deprivation it talks only one kind of deprivation ignoring all others slightly vague let's keep it look at option b other deprivations in a human life have nothing to do with lack of purchasing power no way the author says that other deprivations have nothing to do with lack of purchasing power we can eliminate this option look at option c income poverty is not a permanent condition it changes from time to time when he talks about this he doesn't say so of course he talks about income poverty but he he doesn't says that it keeps changing from time to time so we do remember the idea just now we discussed so c can be eliminated and look at option d income poverty restricts human choices only at a point of time of course there isn't any specific uh, mention made regarding time references all the author talks about is there is more to income po poverty that's what he says so answer is option a for this question the reason is it talks of only one kind of deprivation ignoring all others true only one kind of deprivation of course he talks about income poverty and there is according to the author there is other which he says uh, which he talks 
in as economic poverty. The third question in the same passage, what does the author mean by a po what does the author mean by poverty of a life? Option A says all deprivations in human life which stem not only from lack of income but lack of real opportunities. This option carries a reference in the passage. Here we have references. Poverty of a life in our view lies not merely in the impoverished state in which the person actually lives but also in the lack of real opportunity given by social constraints as well as personal circumstances. So this very well supports option A. So let's reserve this option. Look at option B. Impoverished state of poor people in rural and in urban areas. I made very clear even the, for the first question the author does distinguish rural and urban poor eliminated look at option C missed opportunities in diverse personal circumstances it's not complete look at option D material as, as well as non-material deprivations in a human life which restrict human choices permanently compared to these option A is all inclusive because the question is poverty of a life answer is option A. Going by the text and the question of course we can say that this is one of the easiest passages which almost every candidate would have answered. So let me take to the question directly based on the above passage the following assumptions have been made. Statement 1 says development of agricultural technology is confined to developed countries. Is it confined to developed countries? Confined means exclusive of. Whereas here, the, whereas the text says, techniques developed in the West are being adapted in some places to make tropical crops, tropical crops more productive. So statement one is invalid. Look at the second statement. Agricultural technology is not, adopt, is not adapted in developed, developing countries. Now the very sentence itself carries the clue. It's been adapted but not completely. Answer is neither one nor two. Two more questions in the same passage. Based on the above passage, the following assumptions have been made. Poor countries need to bring about change in their existing farming techniques. Of course, yes. Statement one is valid. Look at the second statement. Developed countries have better infrastructure and they waste less food. There is no reference in the passage to say that the developed countries waste less food. Waste less food. All the author says that things can be done in such a way that wastage can be reduced. Nova he says that developed countries waste less food. So second statement is invalid. Answer is option A for this question. Third question. Based on the above passage, the following assumptions have been made. Look at statement one. Growing enough food for future generations will be a challenge. Of course, yes. That's what, that is the, I would say the crux on which the entire passage rests. Corporate farming is a viable option for food security in poor countries. Nowhere the passage talks about this idea. Therefore, answer is option A. For this. Well, in this question, the author or the examiner who said who has said this question has played with phrases. Let's see how many of you have really answered it in the way you are expected to do. Which one of the following is implied by the passage? Let's start with option A. Most of the people do not accumulate money for their needs. Seems to be very, very convincing, but please do not fall into the trap. Most of the people do not accumulate money for their needs means almost the majority of the people do not accumulate money. Whereas the first sentence is very tricky. It will push you to pick option A, but you have to be very careful. Here the author says the majority of people who fail to accumulate money sufficient for their needs are generally easily influenced by the opinions of God. Are, is, are generally easily influenced by the opinions of others. So the majority of people who fail to accumulate money doesn't mean majority of people fail to accumulate money. There is, there is 
a twist in this phrase and the author is very very clever in playing it those the majority among those who fail to accumulate is what the author is talking about and it doesn't mean majority itself is failing to accumulate hope you have understood option a is wrong look at option b most of the people never fail to accumulate money for their needs of course this contradicts the passage option c there are people who fail to accumulate money for their needs yes option d there is no need to accumulate money it's completely against the content given answer is option c